Hey guys, welcome to another video. I am going to teach you how to do the biggest ZG pull ever. 50 elites, one pull, or the crazy pull as I like to call it. We are going to be pulling 9 packs of crocs and 1 pack of tiger in one pull. Before I start, I would like to give credit to Icewaka. This gentleman was kind enough to show me his technique. I'll link his Twitch in the description if you want to check him out. He's going to be doing this pulls live. If you plan on boosting here, you can get all the way from 100k to 150k XP per hour by using this strategy. You can charge 10 to 30 gold per run here and make 100 to even 300 gold per hour depending on the demand. Since this is better than Stratholm and even Gorshark, and on top of that they're also getting ZG rep which is also an added bonus. Now let's get started and straight to the shopping list. For this pull, you will need Light Feathers, Noggenfogger Elixir, and Limited Invulnerability Potions, and you'll see why later in the video. Now first, let's make our way to the spot from where we will start the pull. Use the video as a guide, or your own route if you have one. As you can see, I am using an epic mount for this pull. Maybe you can do it with a level 40 mount, I'm not sure. One of you guys can try it out and let me know in my Discord server, link in the description. So for one of these pulls, if everything goes according to plan, you will be using 3 light feathers or a couple more noggin for elixirs and 1 lip. Now when you're at this spot, go underwater and make your way to the other side. You're underwater because you don't want to pull the crocs on either sides of the river. Once you cross the river, make your way up the slope and scout for the Gurubashi Berserker Pat. You want to make sure he is patting to the right or is already on the right side before you start the pull. Now I used my shields before applying the 2 minute knocking Fogger elixir slow buff, so I have to wait 30 seconds, apply the 2 minute buff and then shield up and this is very very important. As I wait, I'll show you the gear and talents I'm using for this run. I use the same talents as I use for Mara or Skullet Monastery. As for the gear, I am a bit over geared, but I promise you can do this with a fresh level 60 gear. Go watch Icewaka if you don't believe me. So now I use a Noggenfugger elixir to get a 2 minute slow buff and now I'm going to shield up, mount up and start pulling the crocs. Now you start the pull by pulling this pack and this pack and make sure you do not get hit while you pull them. We want to keep our shields up as long as we can in order to prevent ourselves from getting dazed and dismounted. Now this is why you have to wait for the Gurubashi Berserker to pad to the right. So once you're here we're going to wait till the crocs get a little close and we're going to start pulling the tigers. Make sure you pull the ones that are all the way in the back so you get all of them. As you can see I didn't get hit by any mob so far so both my shields are still maxed out. So once we're here we're going to make this jump to this land over here and we're going to slowly make our way up to this small hill and make sure you don't fall off. And now we're going to jump and pull these crocs and this is why we need the shields so we can tank these crocs without getting dazed. Now here I do get dazed unfortunately, but that's okay, this is why I picked this clip to show you the pull. Now I can educate you on what to do when you get dazed at this point. Now if you get dazed you're going to freeze the crocs and save your blink because as you saw right there the blinks don't work. And if you have iron grenades you can use them to slow the crocs as well. Now here once you're at this tree you want to blink through it. So before you start the pull I recommend you find the sweet spot for the blink. After that it's going to be very consistent and you won't miss it. Now we're going to pull this pack of crocs with a counter spell. And now we're going to move forward. Come to this spot right over here and jump. And midway through the jump we're going to blink. Cut this corner. And pull this pack with a rank 1 blizzard. Now we're going to wait till our blink comes off cooldown then we can use it again and get some more distance from the mobs and here we have to use a slow fall because our knock and frog elixir is running out and make this jump. Now by the time you land on the water the blink should be available again and we're going to use it as soon as it's available. So we're going to blink right here and we have to have our shields up to make sure we don't get dazed by the fishes. It's really bad if we get dazed underwater. And now here we're going to refresh our shields as you can see, all the packs are nice and packed together and now we're going to pull the last couple of packs. Now here, once you're on the water, you want to blink again and body pull the crocs on the right. And once you pull them, we're going to use a light feather for another jump from this point and pull the remaining two packs. 
And by the time we are here, our shields are going to come off cooldown. We're going to tank a couple of hits. Blink. Refresh our shields. Counterspell the next pack. Turn around. And use a lip. Let all the crocs gather up nice and tightly. Freeze them. And continue going. Now, some may resist. That's why you have to use an iron grenade if you have it. If not, use a rank 1 blizzard to slow them. And continue going forward. So from this point you're done tanking all the mobs, so you can switch to mage armor. And you can use one of your mana gems, so the other one comes off cooldown later when you need it. Now we are going to make our way to the bridge, and use the bridge to control the pathing of the mobs up and down it, and use rank 1 and max ranks blizzards to kill the mobs. Now before you try this, I recommend you find your own sweet spot on the bridge, and practice this with one pack of croc so you have a better feel of the jumps. Now the trick here is very simple, if you are low in mana, you only use rank 1 blizzards and you only use a max rank blizzard when you get a clear casting proc. Just like Mara or SM Cat, you repeat this till you kill all the mobs, in this case it might take somewhere between 2-4 to four minutes depending on your clear casting luck. The jumps can be tricky and sometimes the mobs may path around the other side of the bridge. For this, you will just need to improvise. Now, if you are boosting people, you want to make sure that all the mobs die around the top edge of the bridge or around that area, or else they won't receive any experience from the kills. And obviously, if you kill them right there, you obviously won't be able to loot them, so bye-bye possible Cloudkeeper leg plates. And yes, you do have a chance to get Cloudkeeper leg plates from this pull, because they drop from any level 59 plus elites. I can't say the same about Tebos though, since they only drop from level 61 plus elites and the crocodiles are killing and the tigers are all level 60. Now a lot of things can go wrong with this pull. If you look at the left right here, if you got dazed by the crocs or the tigers, anywhere at this point of the pull, you would get dismounted and you won't be able to make the next jump. This jump right here. So the one pull technique would have been a failure. And also right here when you make this jump, and if you don't have your shields on, there's a chance you might get dazed and that's not gonna be fun when you have to go through this pack of crocs. In time you're limited in vulnerability potion properly, you're going to get one shot. Anyway, a lot of things can go wrong in this pull, so my advice is you practice with small pulls first, and once you get your confidence up, you can try the biggest pull. When you're jumping up and down the rope, try not to fall off the bridge, and if you do fall off, use an ice block, and try to come out with a lip and freeze the mobs and use a grenade when necessary. That way you may be able to recover. Uh, I did before, but sometimes it's just so RNG that you can't do anything about it if you fall. So just try not to fall. Here I let the mobs come all the way down this hill. So when I pad down, I can use an evocation and I can get a lot of mana back. Once the mobs are under 50% HP, I like to bring them to the bridge, so I can kill them up here. And I could have easily just used max rank blizzards from this point to kill them, since I have so much mana. But I just wanted to show that, even if I didn't have mana, I could still easily get them down. I know you guys will have a ton of questions after this, and I also know that a ton of you other guys may have answers to those questions. So if you ever see a question in the comment or discord that you may have an answer to, feel free to help out. Or else, I'm always here. And you'll always find me in my discord server, so do join. And please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I have some other videos if you want to go check out. Even one that explains how I got the weapon I'm using. Thanks for watching and uh... If you want to see how many mobs of each kind I killed, wait till the end, I show it all.
Don't forget to subscribe.